Welcome to your practice. Please, uh, please find a comfortable seat on your cushion and we'll get warmed up. Seated cross-legged, place your ankles under or in front of your knees. Take a moment to lift up through your spine. Let's practice breathing in and out through our nose. Think of the breath like a pump. It pumps energy. Long, slow breath, the energy moves slower. Faster breath, you get more energy more quickly. And so we're just taking a deep breath at a steady pace. To feel the torso, chest, ribs, and belly all moving with the breath. Move our shoulders a little bit with the breath as well. We're going to inhale and lift our shoulders up. And then pull them back and relax them as you exhale. We'll do that a couple more times. Inhale up. Pull them back. And then relax them as you exhale. Just like that. Inhale. Up and back. And then exhale. Relax them. Inhale, exhale, in, out, one more, let's do a couple the other direction, you're going to go up and forward and then relax them. Inhale, up and forward. Inhale. Last one. Good, interlace your fingers, stretch your palms forward and away from you. Let's go ahead and reach the hands up as much as they'll go without causing any discomfort to your shoulder. And then turn the palms to face down and bring your hands to your lap. So again, inhale, hands go forward and up. And then down into your lap. One more, inhale, forward and up. Well, during this time, you're gonna place the pocket of your hands behind your head so your elbows are out wide. Look straight ahead, and then turn your head in your hands to open the neck. Try to keep both shoulders and elbows moving backward as you do this. Good. With your head turned to your left, put your left hand down and your right arm up in the sky. And then come back to center. Inhale, hands go up, forward, and then all the way up. And then interlace the fingers behind your head. Turn your head to the right. Good. Right hand down, left hand up. Good. 
and then back to center. Place your hands on your knees and let's just go ahead and bring our ribs forward and lift our chin slightly. Exhale, push down with your hands, pull your ribs back and let the head hang. Let's link back to our breathing. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, back and down. Let's have a slow breathing. Makes you feel more relaxed. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, back and down. One more time. Back and down. And now make circles with your ribs. So with the ribs back, swing them out to the right and then bring them forward. Chain those up. And then swing them out to the left, back and down. One more time, swinging in the same direction. Inhale. And then exhale, left and back. Inhale, right and forward. Exhale, left and back. Trying to make the ribs do most of the movement, not the head. One more time. Let's reverse the direction. So you're going to go inhale, left and forward. Exhale, right and back. A couple more. Just give yourself a moment, place your hands out in front, any amount, just hang your head and your shoulders, just relax here. Keep breathing. Great. When you're ready, you're going to push forward into a tabletop position, hands and knees. Today, we're going to em emphasize the toes and the finger pads in our cat cow. So, as you hang your ribs and lift your chin, dig your finger pads and tuck your toes. So, your, your fingers have a little bit of an arch from fingertip to ball pad, pad of the hand. And then when you exhale, flatten your fingers, point your toenails behind you or put your toenails on the mat and push down, push down with the tops of your feet, push down with the palms of your hands to lift your ribs. Good, tuck the toes, dig the fingertips in, inhale. So a little more range of motion here by incorporating the fingers and toes into the stretch. Exhale, flatten the fingers, point the toes behind you and push down. Inhale, curl the fingers, dig those fingertips into the yoga mat. Tuck your toes, arch the back. Exhale, push down, make a dome in the back. Inhale, curl the fingers. Exhale, go on the back, push down. One more time. Good, stretch your right leg straight back with the toe on the floor still. Right leg straight back. So you're stretching through the back of the leg, back of the calf area. Good. Turn the right foot flat now. So your right toes point off to the right. And now start to roll your ribs. And then lift your right arm up to the sky.
press your right foot flat into the mat. Push your left hand down into the mat. Good. Reach the right hand straight out over the short edge of your mat. And let's come back to tabletop. Extend your left foot straight back, left leg straight back. Stretch through the back of your leg. Turn the left toes out to the left and start to rotate your ribs. Left rib up and then left arm up in the sky. Push down with your left foot, push down with your right hand. Send the left arm out overhead. And then let's come back to tabletop. Same exact sequence, right leg straight back, stretch through the back of the leg. Turn the foot out. Rotate the ribs up with the arm following. Arc it overhead. And then back to center. Left leg straight back, stretch through the back of the leg. Keep breathing, turn the foot, rotate, open. Inhale, stretch the arm out overhead. And then exhale back to tabletop. Tuck your toes, sit your butt back a little bit and look up at the sky like you were a wolf howling at the moon. For fun points, you can make a howling sound. <laughs> Good, then tuck your toes if they're not already, push back downward facing dog posture. Breathe here. Tone your arms. Good, bring your right knee straight in front so it's like a very early pigeon pose. Be narrow with your pigeon so your right knee's in the center of the mat and the right foot is just under your left thigh. So it's very narrow, feeling a stretch on your outer right hip. Very narrow pigeon pose, good. You can go up on your blocks or just, again, howling wolf gesture. Push down with your hands, curl your toes, or I'm sorry, curl your um, fingertips into the mat and stretch wolf howl. Good, Tuck, retuck those left toes if they're not already. Step back, plank posture, breathe. Exhale, downward dog. Push the left knee straight forward in the middle, just off under your right thigh, place your left foot, pigeon pose, narrow pigeon pose. That's a good word for it, good name. Howling wolf. This is actually the way the pigeon pose was done um, more traditionally. It's a more narrow posture. It, it got wider over time. Good, press down through your hands, plank pose. And then downward facing dog posture. Good, coming down to your knees. Let's step, walk your hands off to your left and put your right foot out on the right edge of your mat. And just nice and slow, kind of bend through that front knee and then sit your hips back. You can keep your hands nice and wide almost off your mat, if not off your mat, and lift those right toes up, like a wide runner stretch. And then once again, let's bend into that right knee, walk the hands forward along that edge of your mat. So the right foot's on the right edge, and then walk your hands back along the left edge into a runner stretch, lift the right toes. Let's do that two more times. Walk the hands along the left edge forward as you bend into lunge. And then walk back. 
Last time. Plant your left hand and go ahead and rotate your right arm up to the sky. Broaden your chest, so turn, turn your right thumb back. Even lift your left thumb up. All the other fingers are down, but lift your left thumb up and turn your right thumb back. This will open your chest and open your collarbones a little more. Try to feel, as you open your collarbones a little more, feel the shoulder blades move down your back. Good, now take your right hand and lay it out in front of you and get low. Try to lower your body into a deeper hip stretch. I'm not lowering that much, it's still early, barely bending the elbows, but it can be felt significant. Good, keep pushing down with your back, your right foot and lift your left knee off the ground. A little bit stronger lunge. All right, let's go ahead and step back. Child pose. Your left foot forward on the left edge of your mat and bring your hands over to the right side. And so now we've got a nice wide lunge. Again, we're first we're going to walk the hands forward and bend the front knee. And then you'll walk the hands back along the right edge and lift the front toes to get a little bit more of a runner stretch sensation. Going the walk forward into lunge. Walk the hands back into runner stretch. Walk the hands forward into lunge, inhale. Exhale, walk the hands back. Walk forward, inhale. Last one, exhale, walk back. Good, walk forward. And then turn your left arm up to the sky. We're gonna do that thumb thing again. So turn the left thumb back, try to lift the right thumb up. This will open the collarbones and then bring the shoulders down the back. Good, send that left hand out, out in front and then down. And then think about just getting a little bit lower Deepening that left hip stretch. And then go ahead and step on back. Let's lower down child's pose rest again. Focus on just breathing. And see if your mind can just feel the breath. You can turn everything else off, tune everything else out. And just watch and feel the breath cycle. Much more challenging than it sounds. Good. From here, you're gonna walk forward with your forearms. You're gonna place your forearms on the mat. Stretch your thumb and your pinky away from each other. You can walk your, bring your shoulders over your elbows and go ahead and walk your knees back. If you wanna make this even more challenging, you'll tuck the toes and lift your knees off the ground, forearm plank. It's okay to keep the knees down as well. Still a challenging forearm plank. Try to stretch the distance between your thumbs and pinky. 
Keep breathing. Good, drop your pelvis into the mat and then lift up through your chest and collarbones. Go ahead and point your toes, press the tops of your feet down into the mat and open the front of your spine while toning the back of your spine. Good, let's go ahead and reverse that again. Tuck your toes. You wanna lift your knees off the ground, you can otherwise just push those knees down back into a kneeling forearm plank. When you push down with your knees, push down with your forearms, so it tones and lifts your core up into your back body. Good, now stretch your thumbs away from your pinkies. Good. One more time, drop your pelvis, point your toes, and sphinx posture. Inhale, lift up. Sustain the pose, but keep breathing. Okay, one more time, plank, forearm plank pose. If you want to take the knees off the ground, you can. Kneeling is fine too. Breathe. Tone your back body, keep your core engaged. I guess it's more of a tone your front body and stabilize your back body. We're in last round, Sphinx pose. And if you can stay in Sphinx, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you're going to take your arms out and bring your elbows up in line with your shoulders and have your forearms stick straight out so you're like a field goal post that fell over, or cactus arms, floating cobra, squeezing your shoulder blades onto your back. Good, now if you want, lift your legs up off the ground. Try to keep your knees on the straighter side. Lift your legs off the ground, breathe. Good, place your hands under your shoulders. Inhale, full cobra posture. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Walk it on forward. Try to keep your legs as straight as you can as you walk forward today. And then inhale, round up to standing pose. Good. Inhale, lift your arms up to the sky. In the first round, you're going to bring your hands down the front like this. And you're going to slide them down the sides of your legs as you bow forward. Then inhale, bring your hands up the front of your legs and stretch up to the sky again. Exhale, bring the hands down the sides of your legs. See how this really helps stabilize your back, okay? Pay particular attention. Inhale, come up. And now you're gonna do something similar if you want. If you're already tender about your low back, you're just gonna keep your hands on the sides of the legs. Others are gonna bring your hands just out in front of your legs. It's a little more stability. And then inhale, come up. Notice how you use your core a little more if your hands aren't touching your legs. So they're just in front of your body, about eight inches or so. One more time, about eight inches in front of your body as you bow forward. You have to feel the core a little more. You can keep alternating. Now this time the most challenging as you stretch up is to put the arms out in front. And you have to use the core a lot more to keep your hands about two feet in front of you. Inhale, come back up. It's even harder to come back up with the arms out in front. Let's just try that one more time. As much forward as feels right, where you can stabilize your spine, protect your back by keeping the core engaged. Inhale up. Good, step your right foot forward, 
Left foot back and put your hands behind your head. Pull your chest open as you sink your left heel into the ground. Pull your chest open by drawing the elbows back as you sink your left heel into the ground. Good, bend your back knee, inhale, step forward, arms up, and then bow forward in whichever version felt best to your body. Don't strain your back, please. Be mindful, be humble in your practice. Inhale, up, step your right foot back, warrior one, hands behind your head. As you plant your right heel, pull your elbows back. It's very common to unbend your front knee, keep bending your front knee as you plant your right heel deeper. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, bow forward in the method that works for you. Protect your back. Sometimes keeping your hands out in front is actually quite protective of your back because you have to tone your core or you'll throw your back out. One more time, warrior one, plant the left heel down as you pull the elbows and shoulders back. You can do out cactus arms. I think hands behind the head is nicer because you get a, can pull your hands against each other. Your locked fingers can kind of pull on each other. Open your chest more. Inhale up, bow. Inhale up, last round, right foot back. Good, step forward and bring your hands down by your sides. Good. Take your hands on your waistline or on the hips. Waistline's higher than that, on your hip bones. Squeeze, push in on your hips and kind of push your hips down. And now lift your chest up as high as you can. And even open your, open your throat. Is it inhale? And now you're going to do the opposite. You're going to take your chest, which has lifted way up, and you're going to exhale, push your chest down. You'll feel your background. But think of it as really pushing the chest down. You can bend your knees. Now let's reverse that. Inhale, lift your chest up as high as you can. You can straighten the legs. Look up. And then exhale, push your chest down. Just let your anatomy just sort of do what feels natural. For me, my, my toes actually like to lift a little bit and the knees bend. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, push the chest down. Inhale, chest up. Exhale, chest down. Good, come back up to neutral. Step about as wide as your yoga mat and cover the edges with your outer feet. So your outer feet are parallel. Bring your hands out in front and face your palms up. Now, keep your elbows near your ribs and pull your thumbs back. Okay, we call this external rotation of the arm. External rotation of the arm. Keep doing that. Can you feel how the front of your chest and the front of your shoulder is what's opening? Now we're going to learn internal rotation of the arm. So turn your elbows out and turn your palms down. So my thumbs point down. And now you'll feel the back of your shoulder opening and the front of your chest, the front of your shoulder is closing. You feel internal rotation. Okay, just getting an idea for it. Keep rotating your palms. So almost like they're pointing away from you. Mm -hmm. Let's go one more time. External rotation. 
rotate at the shoulder, elbows come in, palms turn up. Good. And find the range, full range, right? Listen to your shoulder joint. Now internally rotate. Find the end range of your shoulder joint. It should open your back when you do this. And then externally rotate, elbows in, palms up, thumbs pull back. This opens the chest to find the end range. Okay, now we're gonna get crazy here. You're gonna keep the left arm externally rotating and then internally rotate the right arm. It's like walk like an Egyptian or a tea kettle shape. Good, and keep twisting. Rotate that right hand back, rotate that left palm up. Good, and now try to stretch your hands away from each other. Keep stretching out so it's like you're drawing an S shape from hand to hand. There's an S running through your body. Good, let's come back to neutral. Hands in front. Listen carefully, you're gonna turn the right hand up and back so the elbow's under, and the left hand's gonna turn in and down. You're just gonna reverse what you did, reverse the S and rotate in the shoulder joints. Good, now once you've rotated, stretch your palms away from each other to help smooth out tension in the shoulder girdle. Really nice, good. This looks like a John Travolta move or something. And let's come back to neutral, hands in front, elbows middle. One more time, let's make that S. Left hand goes up, right palm goes down and away. And you S shape and twist, twist the shoulder joints, the wrist joints, the finger joints, and stretch now, make it long. Extend the energy, really nice. And then one more time back to neutral. Last round. The right arm is going to externally rotate. The left arm is going to internally rotate. Find the end range. Y'all doing great. I can see it. You're doing fantastic. And extend the stretch out once you've rotated. You should have brand new shoulders after this and come all the way back. Whew. Inhale, stretch your arms up. As long as you can be, bring your feet in together. Get nice and long. And now push your right hand forward and your left hand back. You're going to twist 90 degrees, looking over your left fingertips. Good. Keep that and then turn your head only. Look over the right fingertips. Keep stretching your arms longer apart. Yes. Bend your knees. Drop your hands down next to your kneecaps. And then inhale, stretch your body as long as possible. Drop the left arm forward, the right arm back, and look at the right fingers. 90 degree rotation. Good. Stay in the twist, but just turn the head to look over the left fingers. Good, bend your knees, drop your hands next to your kneecaps. One more time, inhale up, stretch as long as you can be, long joints. Exhale, right hand forward, left arm back, straight line, look at the left fingers, look at the right fingers, extend your arms. Good, drop it down, chair pose, hands near the knees. Inhale, long body, long joints. Right arm back, left arm forward. Look at the right hand first. Look at the left hand second. Good, drop it down, chair pose. We're gonna change it up. Bend your knees, inhale, come up. Bring your right knee straight up, try to balance. Where about your hands just yet? Exhale, step it down. Chair pose, hands touch the knees. Good, left knee up. Try to balance. And then touch it down, chair pose. This time we're gonna keep it a little bit even cleaner. It's gonna be more challenging though. You're gonna bring your right foot against the left and you're gonna draw your right foot up the seam of your left leg as high as it'll go. Keep your toe on the left seam of the leg. Good, drop it down, bend your knees. 
left inseam draws up the right leg, the inseam of the right leg. Good, drop it down. One more time, inhale, bring the right uh, inner foot up the left inseam and stretch your arms out like a T. Good, drop it down with your hands, touch your knees. Bring the left foot up the inseam, arms out like wings. Good, if you wanna go use the wall to balance, now you can. Otherwise, just stay with me with your breath flow, bend. Inhale, bring up the right foot, as high as it'll go, arms out, and now pull the right knee out to the right. Once your foot's as high as it'll go. Good, inhale back to center, and exhale, lower down. Inhale, left foot comes up the inseam of the right. Exhale, turn the left knee out as far as it'll go. Inhale back to center and lower it down. Inhale, bring up the right foot. This time you're going to hold the right ankle today. Hold the right ankle behind you and practice staying upright. So if you're going to use the wall, you're going to put your, you're going to face the wall with your hand just in front of you on the wall. We're going to stay upright today. Holding the ankle, flex your foot and kick, trying to stay upright, like you're trying to straighten your right leg behind you. Still holding on with your fingertips. You're not gonna straighten your leg unless, unless you've been doing something else instead of yoga practice with me <laughs> to work on that action, like training to be a Shaolin Kung Fu master or something. Kicking with the leg, staying upright today. Good, bring it back in, lower down, bend your knees, touch your knees with your fingertips. Inhale, bring up the left leg, hold the left ankle with your left hand. Reach your right arm straight out in front of you, sorry, straight up above you and slightly in front of you. Stay upright today and then kick to try to straighten your left leg behind you. Emphasis on the try to straighten. It's just the action. It's not the uh, visual. This is how you release the hip flexor. Stay upright, yes. Don't lean forward with your body today. Good, lower it down, touch your knees. Good, go ahead, step your left foot back, warrior two legs. Start with the right leg straight. Today in our warrior two, let's take a, a, a less open stance. That means rather than be 90 degrees with your feet, you're gonna push your left heel back further, almost like a warrior one foot. So it's a little more closed. Good. Plant your left heel down in the mat. And now, so it's a little more closed. My hips are not perfectly open today. They're a little more closed. Bend the right knee as you sink your pelvis down. A little more closed in your warrior one. Yeah. You feel your left hips a little more uh, stable. Now, send the right arms out and still stay parallel though with the mat edge. So you're gonna be a little bit twisted in the body. Yeah. Back arm two, left arm two, you got it. Three. Good, now turn your body as you straighten your legs. Lift your arms up in a V and pull your shoulder blades back. Good. Push your hips back and lean your heart out like you're on the front of the Titanic in that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. A little further forward, Kathy. Think, think like a flat back, uh, moving towards flat back, forward fold, yeah. 
Good, inhale, come up. Stretch your arms up into the sky. Reach the fingertips back behind you. And then exhale, bend back into warrior two. Keep the hips closed, but open your chest to the long edge of the mat. Good, turn, straighten both legs. Swan dive out over the front leg. Push that back heel down. Good, inhale, reach back up, leg straight. Stretch those fingertips up and back behind you. And then warrior two, one more time. Bend the back foot, back knee, and step to the front of your mat. Good, rest your arms a second. And breathe deeply in mountain pose. Let the body recover. Let the breath and the blood circulate. Great, let's go ahead and transition to our next side. Right foot back, and we're gonna close our stance today. Even though, so the shoulders will open up, but the hips will be about 45 or so degrees. And emphasize pushing the right heel down. As you bend your front knee, let's put our arms out, warrior two arms. Good, straighten the legs, turn the body, V-shaped arms. Swan dive out over the straight leg, the front leg. Stay up, really open your chest today. Shoulders back, stay up to Kathy. You wanna keep the arms out like you're a soaring bird. That's it, arms out in a V shape. Yeah, open your head, good. Inhale, come back up. Bring the hands together and stretch them over your head and pull them back. Big open chest. Good, now bend into warrior two again. Plant that right heel down. Inhale, straighten your legs, wings, V-shaped wings. Swan dive out over the straight leg, front leg. Be planting that right heel down. Good, inhale, come up. Touch the fingertips up and back, open. Warrior two. Good, bend your back knee and step to the front of your mat. Relax your body, relax your arms. Just be in mountain pose a moment. You should feel very upright. Good, go ahead and find a wall and put your right hand at shoulder's height on the wall, the right fingertips. You're gonna face, you're gonna face um, not at the wall, so it's straight out. Good. Uh, Kathy, I think you should turn and actually use the green wall for what we're gonna do. So you're facing, yeah, like that, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works, Lynn. Okay, now, Keep your body facing the direction it's gonna face and just start to walk your fingertips, your right fingertips back and up just a little bit. Don't twist your spine, don't twist your ribs. You wanna feel a stretch across your right chest muscles. Oh, you had it, John. Yeah, there you go. Put your hand on the wall there and just walk your hand back. Good, now, now, 
press your hand against your wall and turn away from the wall a little bit with your chest. You should feel even more stretch across your right chest muscles there. Now keep that and step your left foot back. Step your left foot back. Keep your right hand on the wall. Keep your right hand on the wall. And now plant your foot and turn even more away from the wall. Open into the room a little bit. Good, step back, and let's do the other side. You're gonna put your body facing the other direction. You're gonna put your left hand on the wall. I'm facing away from the camera. Let me know afterwards if the mic picks up my voice still. From here, walk the left fingers back and up slightly. Try not to rotate your body to the wall. Just let the arm create a stretch in your chest. Press on the wall and turn into the room a little bit, deepening the stretch. Good, bend your left knee and step your right foot back and keep walking the left hand back and then turn into the middle of the room even more. Good, step out of your pose. That should feel pretty open here. Good, exhale, bow. Hands on the mat and step back. Bend your knees onto the mat, and let's go ahead and lie on our belly. Prop yourself up on your left forearm. Bend your right knee and hold your right ankle. If you can't reach your right ankle, you're gonna use the strap. Today, keep your right knee on the mat and then start to kick your foot. Kick your foot so it pulls your chest and your right shoulder back. The kicking of the foot might lift the knee a little bit. That's okay. And let's, now let's turn our head to the left. If you can, see if you can keep your chest up at the height it's at and take your left hand off the ground. Squeeze your shoulder blade onto your back. Good, relax it down and rest. Prop yourself up on your right forearm. Reach back and hold your ankle with your left hand, left foot, left ankle, left uh, hand. Try to keep your knee on the ground today and kick to help pull your left shoulder and chest open. Breathe. Now try to look to the right, away from the kicking leg. If you can maintain this, keep your lift in your spine, lift in your chest, and float your right arm out to the side. And relax it down, rest. You're going to either do that again on each side, or you're going to try to do both sides at the same time. Let's hold our right first, and you'll just time it if you're doing each side separately. And once you
once you've got the right side, try to keep your chest lifting and hold the left side. Don't try to lift the knees today. Actually try to keep the knees down and just kick back. Trying to keep the knees down. Lifting up through your core, core keeping your chest activated. Knees low, kick back, good. Arms are relaxed except for the fingertips. Keep breathing. All right, you wanna get crazy. Here we go, you're gonna roll onto your left shoulder, left side, and keep holding on. Then you're gonna see if you can roll back into the pose without letting go. And so you can roll onto the right side. And then roll back without letting go. And then let go. Push back, child's pose for a moment. All right, now I'm gonna face, a, normally when I do bridge pose, I have my toes facing the camera, my head behind me, but we're gonna focus on something different today. I'm gonna to change my position where my head's gonna face the camera-ish. We're gonna land on our backs, please. And uh, walk your feet in. Good. And walk your feet as close to your butt as you can. Still about hips distance apart with the knees and feet. And now stretch your arms towards your heels. So your fingertips are aiming for your heels. So it pulls, pulls the shoulder blades away from the ear. Now lift up your hips, bridge pose. And keep reaching your fingertips towards your heels. What you're gonna do is you're gonna roll onto each side and tuck your shoulder more under your back. So you're rolling from side to side, tucking the shoulder blades under your back. And then you're gonna walk your feet in again. See if you can hold your heels with your thumb or end, end or index. If you can't reach, just do your bridge pose and you work towards aiming for your heels. And if you can hold your heels, push your heels and arms down into the floor. Good, slowly let go of your feet if you're holding them and come down onto your back. Just relax your back for a second. Don't pull your knees into your chest today. Instead, just put your hands on top of your knees. Don't pull, just rest your hands on top of your knees. Your feet will float. And in a second, we'll pull. But for now, just kind of let your body naturally release the back bend.
we're going to do one leg at a time. Put the left foot back on the floor and uh, just gently, rather than think about knee to chest, just think about your right thigh getting closer to your belly. Good, you have two options now. You can hold behind the right thigh and kick your heel into the sky to straighten the leg. And if that's too much of a challenge, what you'll do is you'll actually just line your knees up and kick the right heel on a diagonal towards the sky. It's a little bit more accessible, a little more muscular engaged. And then go ahead and bend that right knee, put the foot on the floor. Let's just rest our hands on top of the left knee. Don't pull yet. And then rather than think about knee to chest, think about left thigh towards your belly muscles. And then again, holding behind the left thigh if you wish, or just extending the knees to touching, extend the heel outward. You can go ahead and rest. Place the soles of your feet together and allow your knees to drop open. Rest your palms on your belly or chest. Go ahead and take your right knee up and over to the left. Unwind and take your left knee up and over to the right. And then come back. We've got the body really prepared for shoulder stand today. And I very rarely teach inversions on, on Zoom for a reason, but we're so close. So, you know, if shoulder stand is not in your practice, I'm going to give you options on what you can work on instead. What you're going to do is you're going to find yourself one or two blocks. Have them nearby. And just a few key points. The shoulder are two points, and the back of your skull is your third point. And that's really how you want to think of the, the weight. Back of your skull, and then the two back of your shoulder points. And you want to have a big, big triangle. 
okay? Big triangle, big spread out triangle. And in terms of your neck, everyone's a little different. You gotta have to find, once you get up there, how much the chin should be lifted or lowered. There should be no pinching, no tension in the neck. It really depends on your body type. Okay? Some people even have a little uh, blanket under their shoulders so their head's a little lower. And you can just watch quickly um, the demonstration of the first round, or if you want to um, just do two shoulder stands, the first one with me and then the second one as a group, you can. So the options are to lift your hips up and walk your feet in and kind of put your hands under your body and then lift your legs up. We're prepared for that variation today. Okay, so that's version one. You can see how my shoulders and my skull, now I've got my elbows down to help make my, a little more guarded. Now the other variation is to roll back, walk the hands onto the back, and then lift up. And I'm gonna show from the other side so you can see the back. I'll roll back first, walk the hands onto the back, elbows in, and then the legs go up. Okay. You choose a version. Come check on everybody just to make sure. You've got to get the hands here and think about you're really walking your hands down in space, but they're walking the hands up the back to help bring your body over your shoulders. I'm gonna come watch you all, make sure. Good, John. So now you gotta walk your hands exactly. And as you walk your hands down your back, you gotta walk the elbows in to help bring those shoulder blades under. Yes, like that, good. And bent knees to start. So your feet are over your butt a little more will help. So John, bend your knees a little bit. Yeah, that's it, good. Oh yeah, you're working it, you got it. Now Lynn, you can start to straighten one leg at a time or both. Kathy, if you, kicking up from bridge is much harder. If you wanna roll back first, that's the easier variation. Oh yeah, if that blanket needs to be thin, there you go. The head needs to be on the mat, good. Now you gotta walk the hands down the back, Kathy, towards your shoulders and walk the elbows in at the same time. Good, we wanna try to get both legs straight up if we can. And notice how, the more you try to bring your legs up, the more you gotta push your butt towards your body, push your chest towards your chin. Yeah. Okay, let's come down and let's have a quick, let me show you what's, what I'm seeing a lot. As a group, I'm gonna show from the side here, hopefully that'll be clear. What I'm seeing a lot is we're getting, um, getting to this place in our hips. Can you see how my hips are in front of my head? And so now it's just biomechanically impossible to get my legs straight. This is where we're getting stuck, friends. You gotta get those legs back over your head first and then walk the elbows in. Try to get those shoulders against your spine more. Look where I put my hands, nice and low, so that when I push my legs up, my hips go towards my body. Okay, so if I, if I put my butt out, it's almost impossible to get my legs up, and I'm kind of stuck here. And so this is the action you have to work. Don't turn your head when you're in shoulder stand. Okay, to come back down out of the pose, the safest way is just to lower the legs. Okay, let's try it again. So when you roll back, send those feet behind you and walk the hands first down your back. That's it, and walk the elbows in as you do that. You're not holding your butt, y'all. You gotta get below the butt. You gotta get almost, you gotta get to your ribs with your hands. Yes, much, much better. Try to get to the ribs with your hands. Keep walking them. Then 
push your elbows into the floor so that will push your hands against your back. Now you start to send those toes up, 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 up with the legs, straight up in the air. You got it, use control of your legs. There's a lot of muscular tone going on. Much, much better this time. Yeah, yeah. and if you let the let legs hang like that, John, you're still getting a good benefit of the inversion. All right, come down when you're all ready. Just rest a second. Probably maybe keep your head down for a second. You get a head rush there, <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> okay, just rest your body a second. Try not to move too much. Good effort on shoulder stand. Okay. Let's go ahead and just lay on our backs now. And, um, you know, on your backs, just take a moment, kind of push your shoulders into the mat and now you will kind of try to almost lift your throat slightly. So you're gonna lift your chin to lift your throat, just to make sure we're kind of countering, push your back of your head down, countering any, if we did any kind of compression in our neck, just nice and open in our chest there for a second here. And just kind of keep that nice open spaciousness. Take your right knee up into your left hand, and let's go ahead and twist, twist over to the left. Yeah, try to keep the throat nice and spacious even as you twist. Don't force anything, obviously. Try to keep a nice spacious throat and let's switch sides. Let's go ahead and stretch our arms and legs out, take up some space, and rest.
go ahead and stretch, press up to a comfortable seat. Thanks, y'all. Namaste.